Okay, follow on from a previous video. Mount Newman Mining's F7, X American. Here we are. Coming down low for you. Just waiting on getting the decals to complete this project and put the windows back in place. But for an old play out unit, it's come up kind of well for a repaint. But as a follow on also from the previous video on paint stripping, part way into this project, come down past all this rubbish. I've got set up here five Lima 42 class locos plus a Hornby GM. Now I've come down to here on purpose because this was my original 42 class made by Lima, which I'd rebuilt. Following on from that was the second of the Lima 42s. So that was my two original 42 class locos. These three here are the ones I've got in 2017. Now I've had this one soaking in Mr. Muscle for about two hours, then bleached for another two hours. And I'm about to go on to doing the um, rebuild of, of these three particular locos. So you can see after the paint stripping that I've done, that one there is going to become 4201 in the green and yellow. And I need to spot my shadows in that. You can see it had green on it at one stage. Looking at this, it was done in the Australian National Green and Yellow. And as you see, these are missing the pilot beams. That's what they should have. These are also going to get rebuilt again. Well, your number one loco is. But this one here. Focus in for you. That'll become S300 in the guts. It'll be painted in the VR blue. So you'll go from the 4201 in the green and yellow to a Victorian S class in the traditional blue, the VR. That one there, that other 42 class, I'm not too sure exactly what colour scheme I'm going to do in just yet because it was going to go into this colour scheme. And this is the Hornby version. Now the Hornby version by comparison to the Lima version, if I do bring these side by side you'll be able to see there is a big difference. Apart from the height of the locomotive being slightly higher on the Hornby job, and, and typically the, the Lima Hornby couplings, the biggest difference you'll notice, fan detail, these have got bloody tiny tits. But you can compare, compare that to the Lima version. <coughs> Lima version grills are more detailed, more correct. If I line both these locos up side by side. <coughs> you can compare the, the rooftop details. And something else you'll notice, the length. The Lima one is mildly shorter than the Hornby version. And that's where the, the body works are very similar. Now this one here, the horns have been removed off it. They'll go into another project, no doubt. Now, for 40 bucks I couldn't knock this being a second handy. But if I spin this around, you see the big difference here in the, in the back end details. Here the Vessive Yules are ma majorly huge, where the Lima ones are more uh, politely put. And as we look down the rooftop details, you see how much difference there is in roof detail. As we come down, you can see the, there's a height difference. So the Hornby one is much higher than the Lima job. less detailed. So it's hard to say who was cheaping out but I think Lima did the better job of them. Now something else you'll also find a bit different. And I'll spin both these around. 
so you can see the underneath details. Try to line these locos centrally. Just keep on wanting to rock over. There you go. Now Lima have their pickups on the front bogey. Hornby has a drive on the front bogey. If you slide down through here. These are the pickup wheels on the Hornby job. There's Lima. These are the drive bogies. So to look at Hornby and Lima together, Lima's got the power bogey here at the back. Hornby has it at the front. Pickups at the front on Lima. Pickups at the back on Hornby. So basically, that is the easiest comparison. And I offset these things because I keep wanting to tip. Now, Lima they have one piece of axle with wheels which are insulated. Won't be these two individual. But that's an axle that's driven, that's an axle that's driven. These two, if you remove this bogey frame, those two wheels individually fall out. Up the back here, all of these are one piece. So, that's just a bit of a, a quick overview of Hornby and Lima GMs or Bulldogs. So what I shall do for the moment, I'll place all these together for you. You can sort of have a bit of a quick squeezy around and see the differences between the Hornby and the other five Lima jobs that I have. Now the GMs or General Motor Locos yeah, Chrysler, GM, nah. <laughs> similarities, but the um, these these locos are sim similar to the American E8, but uh, there is a major difference between the American E8s and the Australian versions. These were actually shorter. I think there's a slight difference in height as well for memory. But yep, there is a bit of work ahead of me to get all these up to spec, and by that I mean bring up to replicate the full-size locos. So here you'll have 4201 as original, that'll become 4204, that'll become 4201 in the 125th anniversary colours, that'll become Victorian Rose S-Class in traditional blue VR, that I'm not too sure just yet as I say, because that was going to go into this colour scheme. And now I've got the Hornby version, I don't think I'll bother doing the repaint. So all of these are second-hand locos to me. Back in the day, you know, they were something that uh, Lima had brought out and Hornby brought out to compete with Lima. All in HO scale. But pretty soon I shall be doing the video, which will probably follow on from this one, of the rebuild of the Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs is the nickname given to these locos. Also nicknamed Streamliners. And one way of looking at it, this is one of the reasons why they were called streamliners. Because that rounded front. How they got the nickname Bulldog, I don't know. But somebody's bound to tell me. And this is one that I'd rebuilt many years ago. And it's before I actually got hold of the actual plans. Again, traditional Lima, power bogey at the back. Pick up bogey at the front, and in a moment, I shall take the uh, bodywork off each of these so you can get to see what it looks like inside. So, bear with me a moment while we change camera shots. Okay, here we go. Looking at my second 42 class, that's how the chassis looks. As you see, down in here. Separate that. There's a traditional window glass, plastic, as it should be. Now, if I bring it into here, it's a bit hard to see. But it's even coming into the darkness a bit. There we go. You might be able to see the centre peg, if you want to call it. Yeah, it's a bit better now. It's hard to um, get clear plastic clearly. 
that's how the windows should be if it was in good condition. And at the back end here, you might see there's two little slots up the side. That's still in good order if you get one of those things. And traditionally, there's a body with its horns. That's the sort of detail you're looking at. And also, this is where the body clips in to the chassis. And some here. Took a bit of doing to get this bugger apart because somebody glued the windows in. So that's part of the, the window. Comes from up here. You see, they decided to glue all this in place. Meant, well, meant some of this would not come out no matter how hard I tried. Thanks to that idiot. But obviously they thought they were doing the right thing at the time. Keeping my original one up the back here just for, as a comparison. Now something you will note. Lima originally when they brought these things out, the lead weights were this sort of shape. Not quite a pyramid. This one also has its original lead weight in it. But in a later release they did actually have a block of square steel. Now this one's not sitting proper, properly because some other idiot had glued something else in, in the base of it. Let's bring this up in, into the light for you. There you go. Some other, someone's tried gluing some other steel in there. I've removed the majority of it. That's that last little bit I've got to get out still. And this is the one that I'm converting across to Hornby couplings. Yes, it's a Lima job, but I'm converting this one to have a Hornby coupling to haul the Victorian Railway Spirit Progress cars that were produced by Hornby. So that'll be that one. So it's traditional that Lima did actually do the re release or second run using a lump of steel. So that one's sitting a bit cocked over at the moment. So there's the bodywork for it. And this one here, the centre's been broken out of it. But the nose end is alright. And the back end is still in fairly good condition. So that'll get a clean up when I do my rebuilds. Now to get to this part of it. I've already partly done this for you, but taking this one off for you. Right. You can now see there's the four body clips. And then here we are traditionally without the, the window glass and just sitting the window glass in place. So you can now see where those body clips go. It goes with that. So all you've got to do is spread the metal wide and the whole thing should clip off. By comparison, the Hornby job we've got here, underneath that door is a body clip on either side, plus there's one here under the door at the back. So by pulling that up, you've got the motor here at the front. And someone's actually added a diode here for the headlight. So 
So he uses the standard Lima style ring fill motor on Hornby's own way. So that's just a bit of a difference between the internal mech of both the Lima and Hornby versions. Okay, just from another point of view, this will just illustrate things slightly different. 4201 in the 125th anniversary colours. That's that one. It will become that one. This one here is going to become that. This one here is what I was going to do with this one. But being that I've got the Hornby version of it, I think I'll be using the Hornby version for that. So it leaves this one in doubt. That's what I'm going to do colour wise. Just refresh the S class plans and a basic drawing from the data sheets website deals with both a 42 and 421 with the only difference being the number 2 cab and a few other minor details to the bodywork by comparison. So you can see on, on this with a 42, that's the area I'm going to be removing part of where I've got the black texture. And look at down here. So, so yeah, definitely with that, I've got to open this area up on the model. This side panel has to be completely filled in to be correct. Got the back end here, the window is going to be filled in along with that end window. And then look down here and move all that out of the way. That's how it's supposed to end up looking. This one's got the cab door open on that shot. So there's the colour scheme for that one. A few minor modifications to be done, but otherwise, eventually, there's the view of the loco. Project soon to start. Okay, here we are a few days open the previous recording. Series of GMs or 42 classes on the workbench. With this one, this one, this one, that one, and that one all being Lima. That one there being the Hornby job. So you can see the difference in couplings. So at this point of my projects, what I'm doing, I'm converting this particular one, or where the chassis is with a Hornby coupling to go on the back. The reason being this particular one, let me get this in the right light, the coupling on it was already buggered. So what I've done, you see where the white plastic is? It's almost a T-shape. Let's get this into a clearer light for you. Let's bring this in. Not necessarily the easiest of lighting for you. But that's basically the T-shaped piece of plastic I've added in. It's two pieces, one vertical, one horizontal. So if you're looking at doing a conversion to Hornby, you have to cut one side thin. And I've just trimmed off the other side to leave it as it was. The remainder of a, an old cassette screw, much shortened down of course. And if I get in close enough, that little bit of pin you can see sticking up closest to the bogey frame, that is a bit of MIG welding wire, which I've got up from underneath. It's bent to an L shape. It's glued in position from underneath. So 
That becomes a locating lug for the horn decoupling. Okay, the plastic split a little when I've drilled. It's more so when I uh, put the screw through it actually split it all the way through. But that'll give you some idea of what you've got to achieve or do if you want to convert a Lima Loco in, uh, to have a Hornby coupling put onto it. It doesn't apply to every, every one of them, but certainly if, you, if you're doing the Lima 42 classes up, oh, there's the camera to focus, there we go. So if you're going to do these up and put a Lima, I'll take the Lima coupling off and put a Hornby coupling. This particular one, you will need to do that. That is a bogey frame off this chassis here. In a moment, I'll just change camera positions and have the Hornby coupling fitted up. Here we go after a different camera shot, different camera angle. That's how the um, Hornby coupling looks and fitted. At this point in my rebuild of the 42 class, this hood has got to be repaired, well, taken away the remains of what used to be there. About to build a new one in a moment, at least in time of doing the video. But for the S-Class, they're basically the correct details for the S. So, that is how the um, coupling looks all mounted up. So at least you can do a conversion from a lemur to a Hornby uh, coupling. That's the window glass out of this loco just had in my hand. If I remove this one's body. Despite the raindrops you can hear on the roof in the background. That shows the original Lima. And there's a Hornby coupling by comparison. They were both identical units to start with. And just to show you, that's how Lima had it. It's typical, typical Lima style coupling or Euro copper. The one that was on the other loco, the right hand side of this was all knackered. The end of the Link where the single finger salute is. That was all missing. So the um, drop link that just fell down then, that was missing. Well, sorry, it wasn't actually missing. It, it would have just dragged on, on the rails on the other one. So, because it was already knackered, buggered, whatever, I've modified it. Because when this is all painted up, this loco is going to be in Victorian rail blue with the yellow. So instead of the brown and yellow, it'll be uh, blue and yellow, and it'll be hauling my Speed of Progress cars. So that's the need to convert it from Hornby, oh sorry, from Lima to a Hornby coupling. Just to show, front bogey still Lima. This one here, I need to build a, a brand new pilot beam for the front. That's no biggie. But this will become the Victorian Rails S-Class. Going by the plans I've got, the um, loco is pretty much as close as possible. All of these here, I'm having to modify this front end. I've cut the recess just between the loco steps and the front. So we can bring this in close enough for you. You might be able to see where I've recessed the section, taking the beading out of it. And that's where the rail rivets are and that steel band. On the other side, I did somehow manage to uh, take away the steps and I thought, ah oh, crap, I should have left those steps there. But by the time I finish with this area, that'll be all panelled in like it's supposed to be. Uh, come on camera, focus up. There we go. 
So for the Victorian Railways, once I rebuild the rear hood over the, the back, that'll be correct. And just so I can compare the, the two ends. See the, the hood on this one's complete, undamaged. That's how it's supposed to be. The New South Wales 42. I've had to, had to panel in these two windows. This one here has had a rough life. The doorway split. But you can see the differences. I've, t I've taken away the remainder of the hood on this one. And how it should look. I've also drilled in for the tail marker lights. On this back end of this one. So you can sort of see a comparison between the two loco bodies. This particular loco, by the time I'm finished with it, it will be New South Wales 4201 in the 125th colours. And I can um, bring up the picture for you. Bear with me a moment, folks. Got a cantankerous photo, doesn't want to be picked up. And it's 4201 in the 125th anniversary colours. Comes courtesy of somebody from the Rail Transport Museum, New South Wales. And this loco body here is going into that colour scheme. So it's already been previously Australian National by the looks of it. Australian National being all over green with the yellow lining, which is very similar to what this one is. So that'll be that one. So at least having this wonderful photo, thank you to whoever took the photo. So that'll be the, this particular project that I'm still working on. As with all these Lima 42s, I'm having to do the same job on this side. And I made the same mistake by getting rid of the uh, driver's steps. My blindness. Deepness, whatever. All of these, have, I've all done the same thing to here. Let's bring this into this for you. See so how I've now recessed it. I've taken that bit of beading away. And all the 42 classes that that are going to remain New South Wales will have this window and that window panelled in. Ooh, sorry. So yeah, that's after being in, um, soaking in Mr. Muscle for a good two hours and then soaking in bleach for a couple more hours uh, after that. So that was one of my uh, paint stripping jobs I've just had on my previous YouTube video. So just as a um, well, bringing everyone up to speed as to what I'm doing and where I am. There's my two original 42 classes. That's one I got early 2017. These two here I got at the um, Australian Model Railway Association's 2017 Model Train Exhibition. And this one I got a little bit later. And this one was to go into that colour scheme as I mentioned in a previous video. But this one here I'm not too sure what colour I'm going to do now. Whether I'll just go straight in national green and yellow. Or leave it as it is as, a, as another 42. So this one I'm going to pay little attention to it. These two are the main priorities. And then I'm going to touch these two up in, in their correctness. Just to show you. This is what I've done previously back in 1990 area. That's what I'm doing today. So you can see what what it's like now and what it's going to become. Because at the front end, what I need to get are the five chime horn to go on the nose. Oh, I'm just these down things. Camera one hand. Loco bodies in the other. So yeah, you can sort of see here. I've been working both this side and the opposite side. Luckily, this one here I had remembered to leave the steps behind. 
type of mistake of mine, but by the time these are finished, they'll be all corrected up anyway. So each one of these bodies uh, have all got both sides worked on at the front. These two here in the guts, they're having the back ends done. This one's having a rebuild on the back end. And that one there, somebody's drilled through the fan, I don't know why. One of the fan tops are missing, so I'm in the process also of building a brand new fan top. So a um, bit of plastic was square, cut into octagonals, filed round by hand, and very soon to be filed over into a dome like the other one. So when this back end gets fixed up, that headlight won't be sticking out the way it is. I'm currently working on this one at the moment. But again, I've done the front end of this one and left the step behind, thankfully. This side here, I did the same mistake as previous before I realised it went, ah, crap. So I'll be building a few new steps to get in. That's easily enough done for me. Now I'll build a new pilot beam that'll finish off the front end. This particular one, I've drilled out the area for the marker lights, leaving the headlight as well. And then eventually we'll end up putting the windows back in and it should look like brand new again. So this is the Lima 42 class rebuild project. Once I finish these, I shall get back onto... No, come on camera, focus up. There we go. The D53 class. So, trying to model Australia in, in HO scale. I've also done the same in N. Here's the N scale version in the background, what I built several years ago. So the HO scale one will look like that. Currently, it's looking like this. That'll give you a bit of an idea of some of the detail I've put into it at the moment. I've got to get buffers for the rear end of this one. Once it's all finished, I'll have coal in it, and it'll look like the end scale one in the background. As I also mentioned in a previous video, New South Wales C6 I'd done several years ago. This one never got fully completed, got damaged in the process, and never got back to it. And another project to be modified later on. American 482, which has already been repainted, but it's got to be modified into West Australian and some other in-scale projects in the background to get back to later on. So, let's get back onto these. I shall take a short break and come back to you. Okay, peoples, we're back now. After a couple of hours break. Getting other things done as well. Back to the Lima 42 class rebuild project here in Kev's workshop. See, it's a nice little lineup I've got here, I know. And what I've just been doing prior to this bit of recording, apart from trying to do a few other minor bits, it's now 9 o'clock at night, the rain stopped, thankfully. As you know, as I said earlier about blocking the windows for the 42, I've now just touched up with some paint into this area. It's not necessarily correct. The brown I used on this particular body many years ago was Aqueous Hobby Colour, number 47. Well, out of my jars I've got of it, the lids have all sealed on. Unfortunately, paint's got in between and just jammed it, I can't get it open. So instead I've used the Foquil Tuscan Colour and Focal Paint by comparison to the Aqueous Hobby Colour. You can see there is a slight variance. But what I've done here, you can see where I've actually painted the white bit of plastic brown. The idea of this is to see as to is there, or should I say, are there any gaps that need doing? So, or need seeing to, I should say. So, at least with that, you can now look at it and go, well, hey, at a distance, and right in the distance, <laughs> either way, you can see how much difference there is in, in the paint. So, by the time I put this one back onto its chassis, this is the standard paint that Lima had brought these things out in. 
But what I've done now, I've just, or I've been doing, you see the difference between the Humboldt paint number 69, good number that, gloss yellow. So that again, just like previously, it was to see if I could see any gaps between the plastic that I've put in and the moulding of the original body. So it's not that noticeable, so I'll get the correct colour paint over it later. And we'll see how we go with that. But hopefully, even at a distance, you can't tell that there was ever a window in there or a window in there. You can sort of still see when the light's on it, it looks glossy because that's the paint. But it's hard to tell there was ever a window there. Down the front end, the uh, focal paint came up very, very close to the original Lima colour. So the focal um, Tuscan is very close if you're going to touch up any Lima paintwork. Again, you can see here where it's got a little bit thin where you can still see the white plastic. But by the time I've got all that sorted, you shouldn't notice any difference. So that's the other Lima body, as it was unmolested prior to me. <laughs> uh, so that Uncle Sandy also says I've, I've molested my trains. <laughs> However, that's a, a running joke. There was a, a guy in one of your hobby shops here in Perth called me the Butcher, because I can't have a, a, a standard loco or carriage or whatever unmodified. If the hobby company's the producer is produce them properly I wouldn't have to worry about it. Okay this will be the one that will be 4201 later on. Again you can see there that needs to be painted in its correct colours. What I did do however is the other side. That green I'm using here is the emerald green. That's humble paint number two. That's the colour scheme I'll be using or the paint I shall be using on this colour scheme. And what I've done for the back end, that should have been painted green, but again, the idea was to see that, that edge around the plastic. So I can now go ahead and, and see where things are. In this case, I can say I've got some lines to fill in, or some gaps, I should say, to fill in. But using something like this, I can actually go, right, okay, now I can see how much of a gap there is. I can now get that sorted. Then I can get this all primed up in the in the correct primer colour paint. After it's done in primer, it'll go into its correct colour green. What I have done for this particular model, I've re-drilled in the nose here, so the lights will sit side by side rather than up north and south. So if I get the light in, you can now see four holes. The top and bottom, or the north-south, will be blocked in. The east-west holes will be filled with fibre optics. You see the nose lights plus the marker lights where I've drilled them out. Fortunately the moron that had this loco before me decided to glue the plastic in. So unfortunately there's nothing I can do about getting that glue out without smashing out all the bits. So I may have to make a modification a bit later to the end of the project. Now these are all going to have Lima front and back as far as couplings. This one we are on about a little while ago. This will be the Victorian Rail S class. And here, if I focus in on the back, you can see where I've painted the fan blue. Reason being, I want to see as though um, is there much more of a modification that needs to be done to get this correct. You see I've made the, the dome. It matches almost very much like the first one. You can't really see it as easily now where somebody's drilled down the side here, the grills. But hey, the other thing to note, since my previous bit of video a little while ago, you can see the join at this stage. Pretty soon you won't be able to. That join, and this is the VR blue I'll be using, Humbrol Midnight Blue. I think it's number 14 for memory. I'll tell you in a moment. You can see now how I've built the rear hood. That was a strip of brass. I cut it oversized on purpose so I can trim it down. But it now has a matching rear hood.
And also, what I've done, oops, there we go. Put some into here just to highlight, like I've done everything else. And the highlighting of that just shows me as to if there's anything else that needs to be done first before going into primer. And again, there. I can see there's a bit of a gap that needs filling in but I can get that sorted now that I can see it. So part of going around with a bit of paint beforehand I can now say hey look I still need this to do, I still need that to do before I go ahead and painting it. So this is what I call a test paint. So if you're following the rebuild on my Kev's Workshop website You'll see all the pictorial ways I'm doing things. But this is for my YouTube channel that you're probably watching now. And that way you can actually see what I'm doing. At least with this sort of thing here, I'm focusing more so on locos 1, 2, 3, and 4. Loco 5 I'll probably come back to a bit later. Loco 6 I'm not bothering about because I'm going to leave that standard Hornby. But if I leave these two as they are naturally, as produced, it'll give you a comparison between what was naturally produced and what I've managed to modify to. So, I hope you don't mind these updates. And uh, be sure to keep checking on the Kev's Workshop website for all new projects I'm on. And... Um, if you're in the process of modelling anything Australian in HO scale or in N, then just give me a contact via my contacts page. I've got two email addresses on the website, and then that way you can ask me what it is you need to ask me, and I'll do what I can to help. I might not be able to answer all your questions, but certainly this is just a part of what I am currently in the process of doing. And by looking at the Kev's Workshop website, and you go into the photo gallery page, at least you can get an idea what I have done over the years. I've been modelling since about 1982, 1983. So in 2017, it's been a fair few years. So I've got a lot of my projects I've done over the years that um, are all in the photo gallery pages. And there's still more projects on the, on the go ready after this. So we'll come back to this in a bit later. And um, I'll hopefully have a lot more done. Catch you again soon.